Hello everybody, welcome to my tutorial on my Black History Month slash Digital Learning Day lesson. Um, today I'm going to be showing you what my idea for this day will be and how to use that idea and put it into the classroom. So a summary of my lesson is I plan on sharing and uh, teaching students how to use digital design to basically interpret their ideas for Black History Month. So they will, students will choose a historical black figure and design a website based off that person. So an example could be like Martin Luther King um, and I'll basically design a website about his life and like facts and stuff like that. So for the procedures, first I will have the students pick a historical black figure and have them do research on that person. After that, I will want them to design a logo for that website. And that has to represent something that that person stood for or something about them. And then their last step was to finally put all of their ideas into motion by designing a website with the information they chose. So for, um, for the website, like the actual designing of the website, uh, I found a, a website that's called Wix, Wix.com, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to how to use it. So obviously, if you don't have a, a, an account, uh, you sign up. But if you do, you just log in right here with your information. And after you log in or you sign up, it's going to lead you here to this uh, web page. And what you want to going to do is click on create a new site. After that, you're gonna type in like what you want your website to be. So, for the example, I'm gonna just choose a blog. And as you can see, there's like more types of blogs depending on what you want to do. So, let's just do blog after that it's gonna show you stuff that you want to like add to your website so say like they have all this stuff restaurant menus food orders so for my lesson I'll go really basic so I don't I wouldn't really need to go all that so blog I don't even think we'll need a chat to be honest and Instagram feed will probably be good enough. Now it would either allow like it would create it for you or you could uh, design it yourself. For my lesson I would rather want the students to design it themselves. So click edit a template and then it's going to show you a whole bunch of templates that are available. Um, as you can see, there's a variety of them. I'm just gonna choose blank templates. I feel like they'll allow the students to be more creative. So I would like lean towards using blank templates. I'm gonna just check, choose this one. And then you just click edit. And after it loads, it's gonna lead you here. So basically, you're gonna have all like the students will have all of this, you know, f to their freedom for like for them to play around with. It's I like this because it allows them to be like full on creative and just put their ideas like however they want. And it teaches them a little skill as well with web design. So here I'm gonna just do a random site name since this is our blog 
I'm gonna just name the website. Click edit text. I'm gonna just name it Alex. Artwork. And then you click here. And then to add like a background photo here, you're gonna wanna click change slide background. They have some stock photos here for you to use. Um, if you want to add your own photo, you would click choose an image from your background and then And then you would just drop a picture of you choosing in here. So I'm gonna just find the random picture that I have here. Choose a picture of Batman. I would drop it in. And click change background. And now I have a bunch of Batmans on my screen. So I like this website because it's very simple to use. And it's pretty self-explanatory, you know. Same thing here, if you want to add a picture, just click change image. You can type the text, whatever you want. And it's really self-explanatory. If you wanna if you wanna add another page, you go here, click add page. And then it gives you a bunch of more stuff that you can add. And once you're done like designing your website and all that, what you want to do is click publish. And then you're gonna you're gonna choose the first option because the second one, as cool as it is to just design your own, you know, UPS server, whatever that's called. Um, you're gonna have to pay for that, so you just want to choose a free option. Click save and continue. So now the site is saved. Um, this is what you're gonna have to type in in order to go to the website. You want to click publish now. Gonna pop up. Congratulations, your site is published and live on now. Um, and we're gonna go use site to see, obviously. And there you go. It's simple as that. Just designing your own website. Now, if I was actually gonna interpret this into the classroom, I would have two rubrics. One of them will be for the gathering of the information, and the other will actually be for the web design component. So about that, for the web design component. Um, I feel like it's smart to have two separate rubrics, just because of the reason it would just be too much to just add like all these components into one big rubric. So it's easier to just divide it into you know the organization, the information, the quality of information, and then obviously have, you know, the, the web design component of it, like how the layout is structured and the links and contents of it and the navigation is simple. And I think that's the best way to go. Uh, I really like this idea of like incorporating Black History into Digital Learning Day, only because it takes place in the same month. So I feel like that's the way I would go with this, this digital learning day and the whole thing about it. Thank you for tuning into my tutorial and 